Right, so I'm going to try to do this off the cuff, just, just uh, unedited, well, unedited, unscripted, um, just to see how well it goes. And if it goes well, then I'll do it like this, continuing, but if not, I'll just script it out. So this video is a book review of one coming apart. The State of White America, 1960 to 2010. This is by Charles Murray. Now, I found this book when I was working at the um, Buffalo Billiards down in DC, in DuPont Circle, DC, uh, as a security security guard, uh, quote unquote. I found this with a whole bunch of other books as well, just um, stashed in a corner somewhere, and you know, I had some time to read, so I I read. <laughs> This book was quite interesting, and it, 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 it was quite interesting for, for a number of reasons. Number one, um, every single time people came in and saw me reading this book, or just, 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 right, just different, different people, there was interesting responses to it. Most people had, um, it was like, oh, what's that? Oh, hmm, interesting, interesting. But black people were like, hmm, I need to pick that up. Uh, white people, especially white women, um, they 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 tend to have a rather interesting response to this. Like, oh my God, are you serious? You're really reading that? You know, you know who Charles Murray is, right? I mean, he's like a really big, well-known racist. I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right. Well, that didn't stop me from reading the book, and uh, you know, let's just say he is. Not saying he is or isn't. Uh, this is not to demonize or praise the man. You can go and research him yourself and figure out what you want to think about him. But let's just say he is, just for argument, okay? Well, you know what? Then I definitely will be reading his shit because this it's, is probably in my best interest to know what they are thinking or what they are outputting to society for others like them to um, gain as far as knowledge or beliefs. So... Again, not saying he is or isn't. That is the prevailing thought that I got mainly from white women. As far as white men go, well, they just looked at the book, looked at me, looked back at the book, and they quietly moved on. Take that for what you will. Now, coming apart, State of White America, 1960-2010. Now, he immediately lets it be known at the beginning of the book that he used white America as opposed to any other America. Well, because back then, from what, 1960, there really was... Uh, to be able to get that broad a scope, um, or, uh, yeah, scope, uh, there, there, there really was no other group of people. Black people, obviously, for, 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 for reasons that should be quite obvious to anyone in today's day and age, uh, he was not able to get as much data as he was able to with whites. They, um, obviously Asians, Indians, Middle Easterners and stuff, wouldn't have been possible, 1960. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to read off the back part of the book. There isn't a uh, inside um, preface, so I shall read off the back part of the book and then get into a little bit of um, detail. New York Times bestseller. New York Times bestseller, it, like many other books are. <laughs> the instant bestseller that sparked a national debate and transformed national discourse about America's class divide. Updated for this paperback edition. Okay. In Coming Apart, the groundbreaking author of Losing Ground and The Bell Curve explored the recent formation, not so recent, but recent formation of America's classes that are different from anything we have ever known. Drawing on five decades of statistics and research, Charles Murray demonstrates that a new upper class and a new lower class have diverged so far in core behaviors and values that they barely recognize their underlying American kinship. The trends Murray describes do not break along lines of race or ethnicity. The divergence between class has nothing to do with income inequality. Instead, Murray argues that the top and bottom of white Americans increasingly live in different cultures, with the powerful upper class surrounded only by their own kind, ignorant about life in the mainstream, in mainstream America, and the lower class suffering the erosions of family and community life that strike at the heart of the pursuit of happiness. Hailed as a landmark book in the tradition of Robert Putnam's <coughs> Bowling Alone and Murray's own Losing Ground, Coming Apart asks us to come to grips with a problem that threatens the survival of the American project. 
Interesting choice of words, project. Hmm. Quote, a sobering portrait. A sobering portrait of a nation where millions of people are losing touch with the founda with the founding virtues that have long lent Americans lives purposed, direction and happiness. W. Bradford Wilcox, Wall Street Journal. Quote, arguably the most consequential social scientist alive. Jonathan uh Johann Goldberg, best selling author. Okay. Right, so even though I read this book yeah, well, um, let me not say years ago, uh, but it's been over a year, it's been quite a while. Um, I actually do still remember this book for the most part. And I must say, uh, minus two, minus two very specific things, which I, had, <laughs> despite what I just said, I actually don't remember them word for word, like I couldn't verbatim say it. Um, there were two things in this book that I didn't quite agree with. One of them, towards the beginning of the book, the beginning chapters, said something to the effect of the uh, the intelligence that you have at about seven years old is the intelligence that you're going to have on through the rest of your life. Mm, sorry, I, I don't believe that for a second, but okay. Uh, there was another one towards the mid-going-on end of the book, and I forgot what it was, but if I saw it, I would know uh, exactly, um, not, I would know it if I saw it. However, those two things withstanding, um, uh, or notwithstanding, uh, I must say I, I, I do recommend reading this book, this book, this specific book of his. I have not read any other book of his, so I will not recommend them or denounce them. Uh, this one I will, and for the very simple reason that in coming to this country, I grew, I, I landed, crash landed in Potomac, and I have grown up there. Went to elementary, middle school there. Uh, went to high school at Wooten, Wooten High School uh, in Rockville, Maryland. So uh, you might as well call it that, because I could have easily gone to Churchill if I wanted. Uh, I did, in fact, see everything that he's talking about. One key thing that he talks about is that is, is this concept of the super zips. Basically the super zip codes think 90210, I think everybody knows that zip code. Uh, some other zip codes, two zip, pretty much anything in Montgomery County, Maryland, but probably the most well known is 20854, which is like the middle of Potomac. Uh, there's another one uh, which is not so much rich white money, but rich international money, and that is 20815, that's Chevy Chase, Maryland. Uh, that's pretty much, th think Potomac, but with more international people than just like flat out whites. <laughs> okay, rich, rich, wealthy whites. Some certain things that he describes here, I could readily remember from, from my history. Uh, for example, one, um, yeah, they don't like to say this too much, but yes, they do tend to be a little bit liberal. Um, more oftentimes than not, at least in certain in certain areas, uh, certain areas. <laughs> um, if you look out in the parking lots, this is something interesting that I didn't realize until I actually um, did uh, think about. It. I'm like, oh crap, yeah, he's right. Uh, look outside. If, if if you want to know what the demograph, uh, well, not demographics, but what the stage in life people are at in any area. Look out in the parking lots. Uh, if you want to go to like a PTA meeting, like a parent-teacher meeting, um, if you go to like a social club or something, or any kind of club, uh, look outside at the parking lots and see what kind of cars are there. I guarantee you in Potomac, you are not, um, um, unless of course it's a worker or something, you're not going to find 1990s, pretty much anything, uh, but 1990s like Crown Vicks or Ford Explorers or something like that. You're not about to find Mercury Grand Marquis or anything like that. Hell, you might not even find Lincoln Town Cars, even though those could and often do double as private limousines. What you will find is the uh, what I call the um, the base three, Porsche, BMW, Mercedes, and then pretty much goes up from that. You may find an Aston Martin here or there. You might find a Lambo. You might find uh, 
Ferrari maybe, but uh, usually, if not always, no less than the base three. Porsche, 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 Mercedes, BMW, which is quite interesting. Go into any parking lot in Potomac, you're more than likely going to find more of those than anything else. Of course, you do find the Honda Civics, the Honda Accords, and stuff like that. Chances are those kids are a little bit younger. Well, well those people are younger kids, maybe high school kids, that are driving those, if they're not driving the, the big three that I just mentioned. But that is a very good indication. Another thing that he talked about in this book is the fact that these super zips, these areas of concentrated people who have high education or, well, education, and I just put this in here, indoctrination, all right? I mean, it's just, it's, look, education, we'll say education. Now, as to whether they have high knowledge, that's a different thing, but they have high education in fill in the blank, okay? They have high education, they're highly educated. Uh, they tend to be on the thinner and healthier side. They tend to more, I'm going to be honest, unless you go to like old white people, like like old, old white people, the younger white people, people call it 45, 40, under, hell, maybe even 50 and under, uh, certainly 40 and under, they usually tend to be thin. Um, for all you people that like to watch porn and stuff like that, and those MILFs that you all look at that, you know, my God, they're 40, 45, 50, and yet they look at, yeah, you'll find those in Potomac. <laughs> all right? Yeah, those soccer moms that is like, yeah, whoa, whoa, that's a mom? Like, whoa, that's a grandma? Yeah, you'll find those in Potomac. All right? Um, they usually tend to be thinner, not 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 thicker, uh, or fatter, just fat. Well, I don't even say thick. Um, more health conscious, more liberal, pretty much everything that he said in this book. So, yes, it has, it was, in fact, correct. Um, another big thing that, I, that he talked about in here, which I just sat and thought about it for a little while, and then I'm like, you know what, yeah, I can see how that's, that's probably the case. He talked about four specific things that, um, that helped to make America what it was. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he did touch on the whole... Well, he didn't even touch on it, but he did throw a glancing blow to slavery and all of that. But, four specific things. And if I can quickly get to them, well, I guess this kind of uh, lends to scripting it. Let's see here. Formation. Um, just looking through the contents here. Formation of a new upper class, formation of a new lower class, right? Uh, why it matters. Okay, yes. Uh, it actually has the four here, which is under part two, formation of the new lower class. Okay, so four things. Marriage, industrious, industriousness, honesty, and relig religious... Bear with me here. Religiosity. Wow, okay. I've only had to say that word like maybe eight times in the last two years. Religiosity. Those four things apparently seem to have kept society together for the most part. Why? Uh, well, marriage. Um, and this should be quite easy to understand. Marriage. When you're married and you actually care about the person you're married to and the kids and stuff, eh, that kind of makes you work a little bit harder simply because you have to, for one, um, versus if you're single, like me, myself, you know, I'm, like, like if I'm single, no kids, am I going to be busting my ass putting up with people's shit <laughs> more than a dude that's like married with two, three, four kids, right? I mean, first of all, it doesn't take anywhere near as much to keep me going as it does of them. Uh, as far as the food bill goes, you might, I, I, I tend to argue to the contrary. But um, as far as everything else, living, I can just live in a room. I can live in an efficiency apartment or a one-bedroom apartment. I do not need an entire house for a family of me plus wife plus X number of kid or kids, plural, plus dog and or cat and whatever else. Right? And all their stuff. So just on that part alone, marriage, that would make people work harder because they need to support a larger number of people. 
um, as a subsection to that. You know, if you're able to have one man, uh, the man go out and work, and the woman stay home, she can raise the kids, raise them with some raise them with the values that you all agreed, versus shipping the kid off to some daycare or having some nanny do it. And God knows what the values they are teaching the kids, because you both got to go work. The man has to work, so say of society and women. Uh, if anybody remembers Barbarossa's. Um, video house husbands just ain't sexy which just came from an article there you go uh but yes there's marriage so then industriousness the drive to go and work and weather the storm uh to build to build and create wealth that is also going down um and i don't think it's just because people today are lazy or not just that that is one case but let's just be honest here not that my, I don't, I don't think any black person wants to go back to 1960 or earlier, but let's just be honest here. 1960 is a lot different from today. 1930 was a lot different from 1960, a lot different from today. It was a lot easier for people to build wealth back then than today. Today, the amount of regulation, you need to do this, I'm, I'm suing, this and that, this and that. And of course, you want to protect people, but you know what? There's no shortage of people in the ghettos, much less, that have great business ideas and if they could just put up a sign and do what they're doing and just make their money, make their wealth, make their uh, prosperity the way you could just put up a sign and boom, you're in business back in the 1930s and 60s. Yeah, you know what? I dare say a lot of people, uh, things would... If we were allowed to do that today and then and, and have the kind of, well, there's so many different factors. I mean, there's there's the fact that America is no longer the only player on the planet now. Um, globalization, uh, the Internet, we're competing with the entire planet, not just the person down the street. But there's, there, there, there's, there's lots of factors. But the fact is, industriousness, it's, it's, it's gone or... Damn near on the way out, and for good reason, let's not even bring up machines and how they are taking the low to mid-level jobs, right? Um, all the jobs that can be automated, right? Whereas they didn't have that before. So that industriousness and, 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 and the drive to build big, you know, to build what, what would later be the titan of industry or something, eh, you know what? That was probably doomed to doomed to fail with the more progress that we got. We have all this progress now. I mean, was it not Henry Ford that went and said, uh, in the future we'll have like what thirty or twenty hour work weeks? And people are now are working more than they ever did. And usually for less money. It's like we have all of this technology, we have all this stuff, but yet our lives are increasingly harder and it's becoming increasingly harder just to live, just to survive for everyone, right? Can't really be industrious if you have to sit there and be on the edge of subsistence be in survival mode every two seconds. Just, just saying. Honesty. Um, <laughs> uh, having read the book 48 Laws of Power, this one's quite interesting to me. Honesty. Um, this is something that very interesting, and this probably, and this puts, um, how should I put this? This one, honesty, this puts, uh, puts me, or lends me to listen to the, I wouldn't say white supremacists or the KKK racists, but the more nationalistic people of, 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 of any country. It doesn't have to be America. But it does lend me to listen to the more nationalism thumpers, nationalism um, drivers of society, nationalistic based, uh, however you want to put it, honesty. Now, of course, anybody can be dishonest. However, one thing that I've noticed, and, 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 and I've asked my sister this as well, and she probably gave me the best answer of all. I asked my, I asked my sister, why is it that 
black people in America seem to be doing so much worse than the blacks that come here and are able to quote unquote excel to a certain degree. And she gave me probably the best answer that I've ever gotten. Because I've asked numerous people this and they kept giving me hand waving answers. And her answer was pretty much twofold. One, black people from other countries, they grew up around their own people, their own culture, their own and hell in their own country. Like just like with us in Jamaica. So there was a certain level of understanding amongst the peoples, right? That's not the case with black people here. And it's not the case with them here. And the reason why they're not able to do as well, well, um, numerous reasons. I mean, this, this wasn't just the only reason. There's numerous reasons you can go into. But one of the reasons here is that they come here or they come here and they see black people doing not as good, they try and they're succeeding and then they're ripped apart. It's like, hey, you can be with us, the winner's circle, you just have to reject black people, the black Americans. That's one. The other is that, like in every other country, China, Chinese people, Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern people, uh, Africa, Africans, Jamaica, Jamaicans. Here, it's a fucking mixed bag. It's a mixed bag of Skittles. You have different people, different cultures, different beliefs, different groups, different, 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 all in there. Not one homogeneous thing. It's just a huge mud-looking melting pot, which is really nothing more than just different chunks, right? <laughs> right? Think Campbell's Chunky Soup, not Campbell's Creamy, right? It's just different chunks. You have your little Chinatown here. You have your little Italy. You have whatever the hell town, this town, that town. Me as a black person, I could not walk into Chinatown and be accepted by anybody there. They'll accept my money, and that's about it. Same thing if I walk into any other group of people's establishment, right? And the honesty along with that, and the honesty comes along with that. How? Simple. Because you are not, the people tend to not trust outside people as much as they trust their own group of people, with the exception of black people, or at least at the very least black Americans, <laughs> okay? Asians, they're going to trust other Asians more than they trust non-Asians, even whites. Indians, same thing. Middle Eastern, same thing. And I noticed that in school, all the Asians hung out with other Asians for the most part, except that in my high school, Asians happened to be the majority of, 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 of people there. So they were more or less kind of forced to hang out with other people, the few at the edge, at the edges of, of, of the Asian uh, group. They were forced to hang out with other people because there were just so many of them. It's like, eh, well, you're going to have to, particularly with white people, right? Whites kind of stayed to themselves. When I went to high school, when I first got in there at the end of the school year, 2001 school year, um, I was the seventh, literally seventh black person there. Uh, when I graduated, I was like, uh, it, it moved up to like 10, uh, 9 or 11 or some shit like that, some black people, right? Uh, we, we, we were in the minority, to say the least. Blacks, Spanish, I think there was like one or two Native Americans. But people had different uh, defenses and guards for different people. Right? People were a lot more honest, tying back to the book, a lot more honest with their own group of people because they know where they come from. They know the kind of base minimum that they should have gotten from home, right? Being of this culture, of this group, versus Asian person trying to go into black world, black person trying to go into Middle Eastern world, Middle Eastern trying to go into white world, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who the hell are you? You're not from my tribe. You're not from my group. Like, I need ten forms of ID, bitch. Like, whoa. And, of course, people were a lot less honest with outsiders than they were with their own group. That's something that I noticed. When you have just a complete homogeneous mix, 
just black people across the board, just white people across the board, just Asians, Indians across the board, things go a little bit differently than when you have this Skittles trail mix mixed bag of people. All right, just to say the least. And the last one, a religi religiosity. For whatever you want to say, especially you atheists about religion, one thing is for certain, even though this was probably not the initial intent, but this ended up being one of the things, it kept people together. And I always had this thought in my, I always thought of this, like, okay, let's get rid of religion, just like the, uh, who was it, the French with their age of reason? For all you atheists that like to believe that, oh, atheists don't do any violent people that uh, uh, don't do any violent things, that's for the religious people. They all do all these wars in the name of religion. Yeah, well, you know, go look up the French with their age of reason and how they did the exact same thing to try to purge religion and just have strictly an atheist society, right? However, religiosity. It kept people together, and I always wondered this. Hmm. You know, if we got rid of God and just, just, just got rid of God completely, and we took up this condensed version, this edited, modified version, uh, Survival of the Fittest, uh, if anybody knows Charles Darwin's book and knows the full title of that book, not the edited title for society, for social, societal consumption, I'm going to tell you this right now. We get rid of God. We get rid of this stuff, this this this, this morality. This morality according to whose rules? There's no such thing as morality out in the animal kingdom. Survival of the fittest. Get it through your head. We get rid of that. All these things that religion, especially Christian religion, is 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 telling us to aspire to and do and believe in whatever. Life gets real easy real quick. <laughs> okay? Because I can tell you this right now, as far as laws of man go, um, apart from the fact that it's easy to, to subvert and just bypass those laws completely and, and not get caught, okay, especially in today's day and age, if you don't have any kind of punishment outside of man's punishment, which can easily be um, sidestepped, Life gets really fair, really interesting, and really easy, really quick. Why? Um, I believe I made a video about this some time back. Uh, the Virtues of Being Evil, I believe it is. Or something along that line. Um, I'll have a link to it. But um, there's no such thing as murder on the animal kingdom. Survival of the fittest. F you as long as I'm okay. Right? Just like out in the animal kingdom. And I'm sure you ladies, I'm sure all the females are going to love this one. There's no such thing as rape out in the animal kingdom either. I'm sure you all like that. Uh, so, all of these things of which society is based off of, all comes from religion. Now, whether it intended that, I don't think it did. I think it more intended it for our spiritual health as opposed to any physical manifestations out in society. I think it was more dealing with our spiritual, but it had that side effect of, you know what, this thing can help keep people in line, help keep society glued together, uh, as opposed to what we have today, where it's like, well, let's just reject that, and it's like, well, we make up our own stuff. Well, we want to make up our own stuff. Well, you know what, we want this, and we want to do, well, we want to go do this. Everybody's going out doing their own thing. The base core, now, put it to you like this, the leaves, as well as the roots, are completely different. Before, the leaves might have been different, but everybody had the same root of the tree, the same core, the same starting point, uh, morally or uh, more or less. Now, that's not the case. And so these are the four things. Marriage, industriousness, honesty, and religi religiosity. Okay? Very interesting book. And as I went through it, I mean, hell, the new upper class, they're in a bubble themselves. Yes, I guarantee you the average person here in Montgomery County, Maryland, which is like one of the biggest super zips in, 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 in the entire country, doesn't have a slightest idea of what the hell is going on in Wyoming or North Dakota or 
give me the name of some place. Arkansas, 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 uh, Kansas, <laughs> uh, Kansas, Missouri, Kansas, Missouri, Kansas, Missouri. Which one is it? Kansas, Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri. I have no idea. I don't have any idea. Not that it really affects my life. It's exactly the point. It doesn't affect my life. However, the problem, and this is one of another things that was talked about in this book, the people in this area, well, no, let me not say the people in this area, people that come from areas such as this, right, are the ones that control policy and control the laws and control the motions of this country for everyone. And yet, they are in a freaking bubble. They have no idea what the hell is going on. Don't give me the president, give me Congress, okay? And while a lot of them may have grown up somewhere, the money and power that they have gotten has completely detached them from where they might have grown up. They might have started from humble beginnings. The money and power completely, uh, completely separated them from it. And then, of course, when you get into my generation, once my generation gets to where the people in Congress are now, when I'm, when my generation is like 50, 60, 70 and stuff, and we're supposed to be in there, yeah, um, you're going to have a bunch of people that knew nothing but this whole super zip type stuff, the, this whole complete detachment from rural Wyoming, rural, rural Georgia, rural... New York, well, not well, not even New York. Middle, the middle of America, right? California. Okay, so the four central points of this whole super zip thing: D.C., the D.C. metro area, right, and then and, and, and spreading out quite far. New York, Miami, and Los Angeles. Right, and pretty much that entire area, those entire areas for like maybe a 25 mile, God forbid, 50 mile radius. All right, I'll, I'll say 25 miles. And of course, there are some other places. You know, there's like Edina. I keep hearing Aaron Clary talk about Edina and Wyzetta, wherever the hell those are. Uh, I believe those are in. Minnesota. I don't know. There's no super zips in Idaho, as far as I know. There's no super zips in Oklahoma? South Dakota? No. Nothing there. What the hell's going on there? Wasn't there some pipeline thing going on there recently? That's about it. So, tying it all together, very interesting book. Very interesting book, and I must say, having grown up in 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 Potomac, I've come to find out that ninety nine point nine nine percent of what this book has said is in fact true. Now, of course, he said white America. This applies to all of America, and of course, with different gradings, you know based off so uh, socioeconomic standing it's affecting everyone right uh, of course it probably affect whites the hardest uh, in certain ways because they're at the top so they have further to fall and of course they speed up faster than somebody somebody that's 10 feet in the air is going to speed up faster than somebody that's one foot in the air and so they're going to fall fall harder when they do fall but it's affecting everybody black uh, white straight on down to blacks but, again, to get a full scope, he had to use white people since obviously they were the ones that there was uh, the, the most complete records for from 1960 till 2010. Very interesting book. I recommend you read this book. And that's it.